Hi, I'm Murray from the YC Cookery School. In this video, I'm going to share with you our little hack for making ice cream without an expensive machine. And to go along with this uh, clip, there's a free downloadable PDF recipe book that has all of our ice cream recipes that are suitable for making without an expensive machine. Now I'm going to kick off by talking about the different types of ice cream machines quickly, and, and then we'll look at uh, how to make great ice cream without one. Ice cream machines are a great piece of kit if you're going to be using them a lot. They're worth their weight in gold. Uh, but they're expensive and if you aren't making that much ice cream or, or that regularly, then they can be a bit of a waste of money and sit on the shelf gathering dust. If you do want to invest in an ice cream machine, then my advice is to not be tempted by cheap ones. For around 50 to 100 euros, you can pick up a small machine and it has a bowl on it that you place in the freezer until it's frozen. It takes about 24 hours. You then pour the mix in and place a small motorized paddle on the top and leave it to do its thing. And this never really works that well. The motor is always a bit weak and the ice cream is never really quite frozen enough before the, all of the uh, cold from the frozen bowl is transferred across into the ice cream. And on top of that, you can only make one batch of ice cream before you need to refreeze the, the bowl again for another 24 hours. Okay, so if you're considering one of these machines, then don't. Leave it on the shelf, leave it for someone else, and save yourself 50 euros and follow one of our recipes instead. The next step up is a machine that has its own built-in freezer compressor. And these are perfect for making ice cream. For roughly, a, they make about a litre to a litre and a half, maybe two uh, in quantity-wise. It's kind of enough for a, a small ball of ice cream for a, for a dessert, for a dinner party, for a, around 10 people, that, that sort of amount. They start at about 150 euros and go upwards depending on the quality of the machine. Uh, and, and with these machines, you can make batch after batch of ice cream or sorbet. Uh, so if you're looking for an entry level machine, um, with a decent output, then this is kind of where you need to start. If your guests get through quite a bit of ice cream and money isn't an option, you can spend around five grand and get yourself into Paco Jet Land. Okay, a Paco Jet is an incredible piece of kit. It looks a bit similar to one of those uh, filter coffee machines from a, from a restaurant, about the same size. And you place all of the raw ingredients like chopped fruit or berries, etc., uh, into a stainless steel beaker, about this big, and then cover it with sugar syrup or cream. And then you simply place it into the freezer until you want to use it. It's really as simple as that. Now when you're ready, you, pr you place your frozen beaker into the machine, set the required number of portions, and it will turn the required amount of this frozen block into the smoothest, most elegant ice cream that you've ever eaten. Okay, The beaker then goes back in the freezer until you use it again. It's literally as simple as that. And because it's churned to order, the ice cream is always in perfect condition. Now one of our methods for no machine ice cream is kind of the poor man's version of the Paco Jet, but it works really, really well. Now ice cream falls into three categories, but generally it's a frozen liquid that undergoes a process to stop it from freezing into a solid block and being unpleasant or, or impossible actually to eat. The two most common ways to achieve this are to either bash up the ice crystals so they're very, very small and therefore the ice cream is, is a nice smooth, creamy texture or to whisk air into the mix, trapping it in the mix and increasing its volume. And this stops it from setting solid. So the standard ice cream machine that I was talking about earlier consists of a freezer unit and a, and a bowl like this, uh, and a churning paddle, which keeps the mix moving as it freezes. And as crystals form, they're broken up and smashed up, and it stops the mix from ever being able to freeze into a solid block. And then you scoop it out and put it in the freezer. Uh, as a side note, it's the addition of alcohol to ice cream will raise the freezing point of the mix, okay? And this means that the ice cream will be softer. So if you add a liqueur or something in, into the mix, then, then you need to allow for that. So generally speaking, ice cream comes in three categories. Custard-based ice cream is what we know as the sort of traditional English method. The cream mixture is flavored and then it's thickened with eggs uh, and then it's churned in an ice cream machine. Okay, this makes the custard break up into small pieces as it's frozen and it gives it a really nice, soft, light, really, really creamy texture. And the best example is, is a classic kind of English vanilla ice cream. But the same method can be used for lots of different flavors. Then there's syrup-based ice cream or sorbet, and that's kind of the traditional French method. The base mixture is usually pureed fruit and sugar syrup, and then it's also churned in a machine to break up any ice crystals. Uh, into nice small pieces and it makes it really light 
a light when it's frozen. But generally speaking, these sorbets tend to be fruit based. Then there's meringue based ice cream or gelato. It's the kind of Italian method. Uh, the method doesn't necessarily require an ice cream machine because the eggs are usually separated and whisked separately with the sugar to give it a really, really thick, stable meringue. And then the cream is whipped so it's full of air as well and it's folded together with the flavoring to make it a really, really light, airy texture of ice cream. And, and this way it can never freeze solid. And due to the high air content, the base can go straight into the freezer and it won't freeze solid. Okay, and this meringue method is one of the methods that we use for no, no machine ice cream because it makes really lovely scoopable light ice cream and it actually gives you a much bigger yield than, than churned ice creams because of the, the added air content. Now the recipe for passion fruit ice cream that's in the PDF that you can download is a really great base recipe. You can substitute any other fruit puree or, or flavor paste for the passion fruit and get really great results. Now our second method for making ice cream without an ice cream machine draws on the principle behind that expensive Paco Jet that I was talking about earlier. We pre-freeze some of the ingredients in ice cube trays or something similar like, a, like the silicon mold that I've, I've got here. And then we blend them together with a chilled sugar syrup. Now the cold from the frozen ingredients allows the liquid to stay frozen to a certain point while the chilled liquid emulsifies everything together and the idea is that if all the ingredients are frozen or chilled the frozen ice cubes can be pureed into a frozen slurry which is kind of similar texture that you'd achieve with an ice cream churner and as a general rule of thumb around three quarters of the total recipe volume should be frozen into cubes and then a quarter should be chilled liquid like cream or, or sugar syrup. Now once the slurry is smooth, you just place it into a container and freeze it down for three to four hours and it should be perfect quenelling consistency to quenelle onto a plate as if you spent thousands on, a, on an ice cream machine. So I hope that's useful. Like I said, if you're sure you're going to be um, making ice cream on a regular basis, then you might want to invest. But I think it's better to start by making some ice cream before you buy and just test it out. You might just find that the money's better invested on another piece of kit that's going to be a bit more used, like upgrading your knives or something like that, for example. Thanks for watching. See you soon.